Hey, it's Josh again from the Fort Worth Trailer here with another video where we just make stuff. We are continuing in this episode to paint our Nerf cosplay strong arm, Nerf strong arm cosplay mod. At last time, we were able to put a lot of the silver on. Today, we are going to paint the pistol grip to look like wood. We're going to break out the acrylics and uh, get to town on that. So uh, let's get started. Okay, before I continue, I want to say a little bit of, uh, about um, the state of the, the gun at this point. At this point, or at some point, we have to decide whether or not we are going to put the gun back together, or when we're going to put the gun back together. If I were leaving this black and just starting to put the weathering on, I would put the gun back together again. Since I'm adding color and I'm not actually adding the weathering, I have decided not to put the gun back together at this point. Um, if you look at this other one that I finished, and you can look closely at this one, there's color here around on this part right here. And, and so, I, same reason, I decided not to put it back together because I had to get the color in underneath the cylinder here, and I didn't want the cylinder in the way when I did that. Now, this one, this isn't a color, and I've already kind of put the silver on where I wanted to up under there. But still, because it's heavier, you know, when you put it back together, it's more lightweight. There's no trigger there to, to get painted. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to wait to put the weather, or to put it together until after I put the color on and when I start to weather it. Now, once you start to weather it and you start to put all the dirt and the grime and stuff on it, you want it fully assembled so that the grime and dirt goes on it as though it were fully assembled, like it would in real life. So that's what we're going to do. If you were wondering what uh, when I was going to start putting it back together, again, we will do that next before the, the weathering starts. So <clears throat> today we're going to work with be work with acrylics. Really important to have your brushes, your water ready, and your assortment of colors. Now, I don't use very many colors. If I were doing more sci-fi stuff, I might have a bigger selection, and I'm probably going to need to go get some more colors um, to do other things. Uh, sometimes, for example, I might if I was going to do this red, like it's a video game gun or yellow. I would mask it off and spray it and then go back and weather it, uh, depending on what I'm doing. Most of the latex, or not, I mean, excuse me, uh, it says Liquitex, which is why I'm totally messing that up in my head. But most of the acrylic work that I do is for weathering or to make things look more realistic. In this case, we are trying to make a realistic looking wooden handle. So the acrylics work really good for that. These are the colors that I use, and I really don't use a whole lot of other colors, and I'm going to go over that real fast. This is one of the most uh, important, raw sienna, burnt sienna, so the two siennas, okay. This has a little bit more red in it. This is red oxide. Oxide is another, is the scientific name for rust, so this looks like rust for obvious reasons, for weathering. Black, for obvious reasons. Uh, not just because you use black, but you mix the black in with all of these uh, to lighten and darken it. And then I use this, and I use this quite a bit because I do a lot of steampunk, and this uh, bright aqua green mixes with the gold and the copper color to make it look like the copper has been oxidized. And so that's why I have these real neutral colors and then a bright green because that works with the copper so what we're gonna do here to make this look like wood wood is a living thing it is made of cells and just like in your body the cells are transparent and so wood actually has a depth to it that you don't realize it's not just solid color and to mimic that depth what we do here and the variation of color is we put this on in layers and in, in order to make this look really realistic, what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of layers. And we're going to put them down, and then we'll put another layer, and we're going to build up this 
these multi layers of color some of them you can see through to the other colors underneath and in the end it it, it should look pretty well and then when we go back and put weathering on it it's going to look great so for my base coat i'm just going to use some burnt sienna and yeah, let's see i try to put these in the same place every time but I'm going to use some of this other, but just to start with, I'm just going to do this. So I have a moderately big brush. Um, not too big, not too small. I want to be able to do some detail, but I don't want it to take too long. And I'm going to put this first cover color on. Now this is going to take me a while, so I'm going to speed up the video and, um, and then slow it down if I, as I switch layers so that I can show you guys how to do this so um, here we go we're gonna mix a little bit of this together and go to town um, and you can watch as I do it I want to show you I'm gonna slow the video down I want to show you I don't know if you can see but you'll notice that as the acrylic dries it's very transparent and which helps and one of the reasons why this layering technique works so well with the acrylic so as it dries you can still see a lot of the black showing through and uh, that that's really important so we can see each successive layer will build on the last uh, but you'll still be able to see the layers underneath Showing through. important to have your rag at this point so in case uh, you make a mistake or um, you need to smooth something out a little bit you got your rag and this is a separate rag from the other rags that we've been using um, wipe it off the silver that's on there you know get a little bit on there need to wipe it off before it dries All right, so we're done with the first coat. Now these, these early coats, especially on these early coats, we are going to use pretty wet, uh, a lot of water, not very thick. And as you can see, as it's drying, you can almost not see it, but it's just a subtle brown because the black is showing through, it's so transparent. We are going to do the next uh, coat. And at this point, we're gonna change it up a little bit, maybe use a little bit less black and a little bit more straight color for this uh, layer. Uh, the next layer, I am going to add some of the lighter color. And probably after that, the next layer, I will add some of this rust color, but not very much. And uh, just keep adding layers.
Alright, so as you can see, the color's not even all the way around. Several coats, I'm not done. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to put, I don't know, three or four different layers on. But you can see that, it's, that uh, you can already start to see detailed variations in color from the different layers. And uh, I'll just keep building this until I'm, I'm happy with it, adding some more color. Okay, so I've put a few layers on. Um, I added a little bit of the rust colored. And then I went back with another real dark layer and kind of left some of the dark streaks in there so that you can start to see that there's some wood grain. You might notice it's kind of bright, kind of red right now, but what, when we go back and weather it, we'll dull it back down. So this is kind of what it look, would look like new, and then we'll go back and we'll make it look old. But that is the finished wooden handle. And the next step that we will do in our next video is we are going to put it back together again, put it all the parts back. I'll show you how to do that. And if we have time, we'll start weathering. Might be a short video, just reassembly, and then a second video after that of the weathering. The weathering doesn't take as long as putting all the different layers of paint on here, and it's more random and creative. So we'll see what we can get done. But thanks for watching again today. Appreciate you guys. Uh, please leave a comment if you have any questions or, or suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to go to my Etsy page where you can look at this and other Nerf guns that I've painted as well. You can buy one for yourself. Until um, next time, bye.